Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, welcome back. Welcome into episode two of Medieval Dynasty. In the first episode we just done, I hope you enjoyed it, ladies and gentlemen. We built ourselves our main house, and this is a house for one of our new villagers that we're going to end up getting at some point. Um, so in the first episode, as you saw, we've uh, started to do a little bit of progression in some of the chapters. Uh, we've got one mission left to do of uh, chapter two, which is the survivalist, just to survive the first season. The season's nearly over, which is great, um, and then it'll bring us into a new season. We've got to go over now and chat to Unagost. Um, we need to also go and have a drink. So we'll drink this water. But yeah, this is now episode two, which hopefully we can get a bit more of the story unfolded as to who our uncle was. And bits and bobs like that. Let's go and find Unigost. Oh, our stamina's gone. Damn it. But yeah, I hope you're all having a great day. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for those of you watching this episode on YouTube, I am a Twitch streamer. We are streaming the game to our lovely community that we have, uh, to our amazing followers. So if you do hear me just chatting random stuff there to people, it is because I'm chatting away to, I'm chatting away to my stream. Oh, look, I'm about to wake him up. I'm sorry there, Unigos, but I need to wake you up. Yo, Jamie, how sings, my guy? Hello, Rasimir. Are you getting settled? The valley is treating me nicely so far. Also, if you're just joining us um, for episode two, um, I do voices. So, uh, look forward to that. That's wonderful, Rasimir. But you come at a poor time. My duties as a Castilian await me. Of course, I understand. Is everything all right? That's it. I'm not sure, to be honest. <gasps> There's been a murder. Oh, my. I thought these things like that don't happen here too often. That's because they don't. I'm just about to go to the crime scene and question the witnesses. I honestly don't know what to expect. Remember, everybody lies. Huh? I've actually met a limp medic once that used to say uh, that used to say that a lot. A medic that couldn't heal himself. <laughs> I'm sure he was great at his job. Jokes aside, Rasimir, that's really serious matter. I won't be able to share more stories with you at the moment. I believe there's someone there you should meet. His name is Sambor. He was one of us. The pack, I mean. Are you serious? He lives here in the valley. That's right. All of them do, actually. Here, I've marked Sambor's house on your map. You should pay him a visit. Great! I'll go right away! But beware. Calling Sambor friendly is like calling being stung by a bee right on the tip of your manhood pleasant. Oh, I'm sure you're exaggerating. He was a part of the reminders, after all. Don't say I didn't warn you. <laughs> I'll be on my way, then. Right. Our next part of the story is to go and talk to Sambor. I wonder what voice will appear for Sambor. Um, now, we've heard he's a bit of an unpleasant character. So, do we go... Do we go for an accent? Or uh, do we try and go comedic with it? If he's meant to be some big old man, that's quite rude. Do we go comedic? You did it. What did you do? Did you get the uh, card you required that you uh, were looking for? Why, have I, why am I running with my fists? Oh, sorry. You don't run with your fists. You run with your feet. But I've got my fists up like I'm ready for a fight. Well, it looks like we're going into the wilderness. If we're going into the wilderness, I want my spear. No, I want my knife is what I need. Just in case we run into any any dangers whilst we're out here. So let's go find Sambor. We're gonna go we're gonna go comedic with it, I reckon. Your team completed Team Road to Glory? Ditto, mate. Ditto. We have also completed Team Road to Glory. For those of you that aren't sure what we're talking about, we're talking about WWE Supercard. Um 
quite a, I've, it's, it's a game I stream quite often. I'm having uh, the week off of the off of the game, just to uh, bring out some new material to you all, basically. Keep an eye on where we are. All good, mate? Yeah, mate, I'm all good, thank you, matey. Um, it's actually been quite a good day, I think. We had a few issues earlier, but... Um, you know me, mate, I've got a silver tongue, and I? I can talk my way out of most situations. And... Talking my way out of a situation I did today, mate. Which meant, um, instead of, uh, instead of, um, having to pay some bits, I don't need to now. So it's all gravy, sweetheart. It's all gravy. And then my little boy's unwell, unfortunately. He's at his mum's at the moment. Um, he got sent home from school today for being sick. Oh. Whoa! Wowzers! We have ran into a wolf. This is not good. Stab him up. Go on. Get him. Yeah, mate. Where's he gone? Let's skin him. So, yeah, he, he ran into us pretty quick there. Whoa. That was crazy. That was scary and all. Because now we're nearly dead. So, this is where Sambo lives by the looks of it. Yeah, this is Sambor's place. We need to heal, man. How do I heal? That gives us two health. That gives us some health. What do we do with limestone? Oh, it's a building material. <laughs> right, so let's eat the stuff that's going to help us. So that's, that's, that's recovered a bit of our health. Let's use up some daisies. I'm just eating meat now. Anything else here that's going to help me? What about a berry? Nope, that's going to poison us. Right, so we won't worry about anything else. We've still got oat roll. And we've got some porridge, which is good. We've got some beers. <gasps> oh, excuse me. So that's good. We've got, fe we've got fur and we've got feathers. Even better. Right, let's go and find this bloke, shall we? Here he is. Right, we're going comedic with him. I think you're lost, boy. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to dist. Wait a second. Look me in the eye. And stop shivering and crying out loud. Huh. Black and blue. You're Lorden's family, aren't you? Yes, my name is Rasimir. You must be Sambor, then. And how do you know that? I was talking with Unigost. He told me that you were part of the Reminders as well. A part of what now? Uh, the pack? The one with Unigos and Lorden? I've never heard this idiotic name in my life. Oh, sorry. Maybe I've made a mistake. We were called the Undying Fist. Oh, now that's a whole lot better name. You're damn right it is. <laughs> that's because I came up with it. Everyone loved it. No idea why Unigos lied to you about that. I'm sure he was just jealous about your creativity. Ha! Of course he was. And not only about that. Anyway, I would love to hear some stories about my uncle and the pack's adventures altogether. That's an amazing coincidence. I would love to spend my time telling the old tales. Oh, by the crackling fire. Oh, my, really? No! Leave my property and forget where it is. Oh, come on, it'll only take a moment. A moment? Of a moment, really. Just tell me, what was my uncle like? How did you become a part of the Rem... The Undying Fist? And, um... What did you do exactly as a pack? <laughs> you don't know what we did? Unigos didn't tell the... Uh, didn't get to that part yet. Ha! <laughs> Alright. But, be quiet and try to be less annoying. Hmm. 
Amber Turd, better watch. Cliff is coming for her acting role. Fuck yeah, I am. Yo, Nitro, how we doing? Where should I begin? Right. It all started when Lorden left his home. He was 18 at the time. If I remember rightly, that clever bastard was always too big of a fish for his birthplace. And he knew that. Left as soon as he could. But cleverness at such a young age always means two things. Being arrogant and hot-headed. His plan was to set out on a big adventure. That's it. Pretty detailed, huh? A path like that is paved with skeletons of young idiots. But none of them was Lorden. Either way, he was wandering for days. Days soon turned into weeks. His rations into dust. He was useless as a hunter. Back then, at least. So berries and mushrooms was all he could get. And so obviously he needed some coins. He came across a manor with orchids so vast they seemed like an ocean. Lorden hired himself there. A week of back-breaking labour had passed. His hands were covered in blisters. Skin red they were from the scorching sun. Knees pulsating from pain. I must say, you're a really amazing storyteller. I wasn't expecting that. Shut up! Do you want me to finish? Where was I? All right. He was exhausted from all of the strenuous work he's done. Went to the Lord of the Manor with a smile on his face to collect the payment. His stomach was already full with fantasies of all the delicious treats he was dreaming of buying. And all of that was ruined by the hand of the Lord holding a couple of lousy coins. Lorden was furious. That was merely a fraction of the pay he was supposed to acquire. He started shouting at the Lord, demanding justice. Peasants were just flies to the Lord. Disgusting, replaceable insects. And what do you do with a fly which buzzes too loudly? Both of Lord's palms struck Lorden's ears with the strength of an ox. Lorden fell to the ground, stunned, and the Lord's guards threw him out of the manor like garbage. Stealing that few pathetic coins while doing so, if I may add. It wasn't until evening when Lorden regained his hearing, and with it came a fervent thought, a thought of revenge. Your uncle was quite a capable fighter when I met him ten years later. But he wasn't back then. He knew the guards would massacre him if only he came close. So he needed to find another way to fulfil his vengeance. Lorda was always ambitious. But that hatred fueled him like nothing before. And what happened next? Tell me. What came later was me becoming bored of this conversation. Go away! No way, you can't leave me like this. I can do whatever I want. Scram. I've got things to do. <coughs> that was always going to happen. What things? I'll do them for you. I'll do anything you want. Just please tell me the story. Damn, you're annoying. No, I'm not. See? What's an annoying thing to say? Okay. You can help me. Seems I won't get rid of you any other way. Just say what needs to be done. You will not regret it. Here, grab this shovel. It's a piece of crap, but it will do. There are clay deposits behind my house. Go there and dig up some clay. I'm on it, boss. Lurking, but got me tabbed. Wash me, I'm dirty. He's in the house, ladies and gents. It feels normal. I'm just quickly reading the message about my, um... About my boy. He feels normal to touch. Haven't got a thermometer. He's still asking for food, etc. Keep him hydrated. See how he gets on by morning. Right, let's go and do this job for him. So we've got to go and dig up some clay. Um, she said he feels normal to touch. And he's asking for food, so that's a good sign. 
So I've just said, keep an eye on him, see how he goes, keep him hydrated, um, and keep an eye on him. We'll see how he is in the morning. Well, there's some clay. We need to get some more clay. There's some more clay for us. Doing the dirty work there of Sambor. There we go. Let's go and deliver the clay now to Sambor. This damn clay weighs a ton. Let's go and uh, let's wet, wet the old mouth, ready for another amazing bit of acting skills, ladies and gents. <sighs> you have it! <laughs> Here, all the clay you wanted. Will you finish the story now? All right, all right. So as I've said, Lorden wasn't much of a fighter back then. He, uh, he didn't have any money. No connections, but had one thing. An unusual ability, you see. From an early age, Lorden was unexpectedly a good liar. No sweaty palms. No voice cracks. No tails, really. Calm, steady breaths. Eye contact held all the way. It's almost 5am and I'm hungry. Hungry as F. I'll be right back. To, I need to make some noodles. Ooh, gotta love noodles. Not a problem at all. I'll see you in a little while. He eventually managed to handle any kind of pressure, even in the craziest of situations. But it wasn't at first. He felt no pressure lying, no stress at all. It was as natural for him as breathing. He had absolutely no remorse. That's very interesting and all, but what happened with the Lord? I swear, you little brat. Interrupt me one more time and you will meet my wrath. Relax, big guy. I'm all ears. <laughs> he came up with a plan. A plan so immensely moronic and unrealistic that it's really hard to believe that it worked so perfect. At first, he convinced the nearby town's tailor to sew him a whole set of clothes worthy of the most wealthy nobleman. The finest of fabrics, silken threads, you name it, horrendously expensive. How did he uh, manage? How did he manage to afford it? You may ask. It's simple. He didn't pay for it. So he stole it. I said no such thing. Lorden was not a thief. Not in the traditional meaning of the word, at least. Apart from that, did I finish my damn story? <clears throat> While wearing his new clues... He travelled to the castle of the king of that realm, and he entered it. Okay, okay, now I know you're making it all up. That's simply impossible. <laughs> you're absolutely right, it is. It's mad to even consider trying to pull that off. But Lorden, <laughs> he just walked straight in. I don't blame you for doubting me. Damn, I would have been the first to doubt a thing like that. If I didn't see him doing it a hundred times later with my own eyes, anyway, he walked right into the castle. And once he was there, he followed through with his plan. What plan was that? <laughs> Begging his wife. Whose wife? The king's. The king's wife? <laughs> so the queen? Indeed. So let me get this straight. The plan was to get to the castle. And lay with his queen? Exactly that. You were right. This is the most absurdly idiotic plan I've ever heard of. <laughs> I told you. But it worked like a charm. I still don't get it. What worked? What has he accomplished by doing this? After the lovemaking, he dressed up, deliberately leaving his undergarments on the bedside. Told the queen he'll be right back with some refreshments. Then he went to one of the king's guards. Told him that he saw the queen with a company of a strange man sneaking into one of the chambers. The guards rushed in and witnessed the queen naked on the bed with the man's clothes right next to her. As the loyal servant, the guard reported on the matter directly to the king himself. Who, as you can probably imagine, became furious to say the least. He couldn't really punish his wife. 
That would be bad for his reputation. But he could pursue her lover. Unfortunately for him, at this point, Lorden was long gone from the castle, riding a beautiful bay mare he borrowed from the stable in the sunset. I still don't get it. <laughs> you see, the king didn't catch the filthy seducer, but he, he didn't mean he couldn't track him down and find him. To do so, the only track he could follow was the one thing Lorden left behind. Except, uh, his undergarments and a pleasurable memory of the queen. His name. It wasn't his real name, of course. The name he used when introducing himself to the queen was... The Lord of Orchids. Precisely! Now you understand! Haha! <laughs> That's incredible! The Lord's head must have left the company of his body pretty promptly. He didn't get killed. That wouldn't be in Lorden's style. The Queen begged for his life to be spared. The King threw him in a dungeon where he spent his days. And that's where he had left. Lorden was amazing. All that with just the power of his wits and speech. He surely showed the Lord that he shouldn't have wronged him. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. The idea about his reasons, Lorden didn't get through all that just because of what the Lord did to him. You see, the Lord was cruel, merciless brute. He mistreated all of his subjects, killed for fun, raped for sport. People used to call him the Laundryman because one of his habits was drowning his bastards in the lake right after birth like little unwanted kittens. Lorden needed to stop him, and he did. But that's not the end of the story. After the Lord's capture, someone had to take his place. He didn't have any rightful successors. But then, with just an uncannily perfect timing, came a distant cousin of the Lord's. A charming young man. With two different eyes. <laughs> you have got to be kidding me. <laughs> he easily acquired all possessions of his sentenced relative. But Lorden... Didn't want any of that, not for himself. So he took only three bags of coins from the treasury. And he left everything else in the hands of the peasants. They were elated. He still probably worshipped there now to this day. I can tell you that. Oh, and one more thing. Why three bags, I hear you ask? That's an easy one. One for the tailor. Another for the stableman. He took the horse from... And the last one was for himself, with the exact amount of coins he was rightfully supposed to work at the orchard for. I told you, Lorden wasn't a thief. And that he was. He mounted his beautiful mare and left the realm continuing his adventures. At least that's the story he used to tell us. So nothing of that may be true at all. <laughs> but that's how it was. That's how it was with Lorden. Now I understand what you and Unigos were talking about. He really does seem surreal. I've never met anyone else like it. Don't get me wrong, he had his flaws. But the things he could do. His tongue wasn't even silver. It was made out of pure gold. But wait, you didn't tell me what was the purpose of the Undying Fist. Oh, I thought that would have been obvious by now. On that day, Lorden's mission was born. He knew that the spoiled, rotten elites like that were scattered all around the world, draining life and dignity from the hard-working simple folk. And that he was capable of stopping them, to some extent at least. So that's exactly what he started doing. Overthrowing corrupted lords and giving back to the community. <laughs> he sounds like a true hero. A true hero. Well... It wasn't like, I mean, he, um, yeah, I guess you could say that. So how did you join the pack? Lorden was working solo until he met Unigost. That rat's agile fingers could work where Lorden's tongue didn't. And then they needed someone with other talents that they were lacking, like strength, manliness, bravery, independence, gallantry, and integrity. Right, I think I get the picture. So they recruited the best there was. I was between job jobs at the time, so I gave them a chance. And finally, the pack started to really make a difference. But I don't like to brag. Oh, yes. 
I noticed. Humble to the bone, I see. <laughs> Thank you for noticing. People at my level don't need to boast about our skills. <laughs> Just like the sun doesn't need to prove it's bright, yeah? Anyhow, I already spoke more words to you than I have the last five years to anyone. It's time for you to go. Preferably, don't come back ever. It was a great pleasure and a true honour. Yeah, I don't care. Leave now. And in return for giving away my location, deliver this delicious meal to Unigost. It's his favourite. A knuckle sandwich. Uh, do you want me to hit him in the face? Did I stutter? No, sir, of course, sir. I'm on my way, sir. So, it, it seems to me that we are now going to go and punch Unigost in the face. Obviously, we need to get rid of some of this weight that we're carrying because we no longer can run. You right? Your head? What's wrong? Oh, uh, I remember you saying, yeah. You're right, though. You're right. Good. Ah? Huh? Yeah, I'm all good. Giving people what they need. That is some incredible acting talents. It really has it, is it? I see your room. I see you're remembering these uh, these lovely lines that uh, Mr. gave us. We're going to drop the clay. We don't need clay. We don't need all this meat either. Like We're, we're all right for meat. Uh, let's drop that. We're going to drop these logs as well. Just because you know, it's, it's five lots of weight. I feel like we can um, we can collect logs wherever we need. So let's uh, what we are going to do is get our knife out just in case. Um, who no, we could run into another wolf. Hopefully we don't. Maybe if we stick to the road. I never thought about sticking to the road before. You know, maybe if we stick to the road, we might be all right. How are you all enjoying the uh, the stream so far? I hope you're enjoying it all. And how are you enjoying the voices? <laughs> let, 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 let's get that underway first. I hope you're enjoying the voices. Fallen there with the heist. Oh, we just discovered an animal spot of the crow and a badger. You're loving the different voices. That's good. That's what I like to hear. Can't imagine what type of voice is going to come out with one of the next ones we find. Sticking to the road here might have been a good thing, you know. You're WrestleMania 38 now. Yay. Good lad. Wow. So our home's over that way. Oh, what's in here? Anything? 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 Some more plantain. I'll definitely take the plantain. I sent my mum a picture today of um, me with uh, out my hair. And it's taken her about... I'm going to say a good three and a half hours to respond. To respond. Uh, my mum. And she's just responded with. God you look like your dad. <laughs> my mum's terrible. When it comes to technology. She is terrible. And the thing is. Her phone. It doesn't, it doesn't be quiet. Her phone will not turn off her notification. 
So you just know that there's been a saxophone playing somewhere for about three hours. <laughs> and it's the most annoying message tone ever that she's got. It just goes on and on and on until you, until you, until you basically accept that someone has messaged you. That's it, Griff. Yeah, just a But this saxophone is fine. The saxophone that she has playing is enough to rip your eyes out. Right? It doesn't even sound like a good saxophone. And it, it's on loop. So if you don't answer the message, that's it. It carries on going. Now, that was three and a half hours ago. <laughs> She's only just replied. When you were on the phone earlier? Yes. Oh, my God. So, yeah... She she probably thought that she had a radio on or sang and and she's listening. Yeah, it's like oh, this is the longest song in the world. Like literally the most ridiculous person when it comes to technology. Right, Unigost, can I remember the voice? Here we go. It's always nice to see you, Rasimir. Unigost, hello. I've talked with Sambor. He's a real sweetheart, isn't he? The sweetest. Like a jar of honey. That's Sambo for you. I see. He did tell me about my uncle, though. The story about the Lord of the Orchids. He has some unexpectedly good storytelling skills, doesn't he? <laughs> he really does. I was downright astonished by that. One time, I swear he went for over a year without speaking a single word. But when, he, when we were sitting by the fire, he remembered some anecdote. He laughed out loud and began his tale. Went from a total mute to a master of ceremonies. The narrative was so gripping, it was not hard to listen. He even did voices. I wonder what that's like. After finishing, he became silent again. I've never fully understood that side of him. <laughs> a theatre genius trapped in the body of a bear wrestler. He actually asked me to give you something. Really? What is that? A knuckle sandwich. Yeah, that sounds exactly like Sambor. So, are you going to deliver? Do you want me to? Oh, sure. I love people punching me in the face. Around the valley, I'm known for it. Would you be so kind and do it for free, though? I'm all out of uh, my being punched in the face budget. Really? No, not really. Are you thick? You're not going to hit anyone, if that's clear. But if he asks, I'll tell him you knocked me out cold. Just out of curiosity, what did Sambo tell you about becoming part of the pact? He said that you were looking for the best to recruit, and there he was. An obvious choice. <laughs> yeah, that seems like something he would say. Well, he was clearly full of crap. It's not a pleasant memory, but I believe you deserve to know the whole story. We didn't recruit him. Well, I guess we did. Lorden did. But that wasn't a matter of choice. When Lorden and I started to follow his mission together, we were rather successful. Everything was going smoothly. Too easy, even. We were doing a lot of good, putting many well-deserved smiles on oppressed faces. That's when we let our guard down. There was a secret guild formed by a few of the higher ranking knights and barons. We called them the Vendors. A bunch of really heartless bastards. Their, their most lucrative business was selling the living merchandise. And no, I'm not talking about animals. Please. Don't say it. Slavery was strictly forbidden in that realm. The queen was adamant about it. Well, the vendors had their own set of rules to follow. They caged them like cattle. Mostly women and children forced to fight rats for the poor little rations they were being given in the damp dungeon that they were holding. The guild preferred quantity over quality. So they didn't care about diseases and they didn't tend to any wounds. Oh, I think I'm going to be sick. Sometimes it took them weeks to get the dead out of the cages. Survival of the fittest. 
or rather, outlasting of the least fortunate. It was simply horrible. If you ask me, all of the damn guild deserved a cruel and slow death. But that wasn't how we operated. Lorden made it very clear from day one, we were never to take a life. And that was the most important of our rules. Anyway, we managed to get everyone out. The carriages full of broken people. Even the horses kept their heads low, mourning. The despair in the air was even more poisonous than the stench of the rotting flesh. And in all that, we forgot to make ourselves safe as well. The mercenaries caught us, brought us to the torture chamber. <laughs> this gruesome place had an even worse room hidden inside it. Unbelievable! The vendors weren't in the patient mood, so they sent their worst torturer right away. I was horror struck, truly petrified. Could barely breathe. Lorden didn't say a word. He just looked at me. His eyes were relaxed, but focused. I realised he wanted me to be calm as well. I just couldn't. He went first. The torturer strapped Lorden to a chair and just started swinging his fists like anvils. Every hit drew blood and broke bones. In a matter of seconds, Lorden's face looked like a bloody pulp. The only thing poking through it was his smile. It was one of the many times I wondered if he was even human. The torturer quickly realised that he needed different tools for such a unique specimen and went to grab his blades. That's when Lorden started talking. He was making him offers, one after another. The torturer just kept carving his torso. Like he was preparing a steak to be grilled. There was so much blood I could taste it in my mouth. I wanted to pass out. Or to, just to run away from it all. I couldn't. My heart was pounding too fast. That's horrible. Suddenly the torturer stopped. He looked at me and back at Lorden. This was the only thing he said. If you're lying, you're going to watch me do the same to him. I was about to puke, but Lorden just nodded. So he untied us both and helped us escape. There were more mercenaries on our way. Heavily armed. No one stopped us. Even they were terrified of the guy. We managed to get out. In one piece. Well, we managed to get out alive. Lorden's wounds wouldn't heal for weeks. And even after that, he was scarred so badly. It looked like he had chainmail stitched to his skin. But we had escaped death. And its emissary became one of us. The torturer. It was Sambor, wasn't it? Yes. I have no words. I'm so sorry this happened to you. Don't be. The path we walked on, it was our choice. We knew the risk. How could you want a person like that amongst the troop? You think I wanted that cutthroat anywhere near me? I couldn't get a wink of sleep with him around for days. I was constantly watching my back. Watching his every move. So why didn't you blow him off? That's simple. Lord had made a deal with him. Promised him the only thing that mattered to that brute. Which was? Money. A whole lot more than what the guild was paying him. And a cut from every heist we did. Couldn't you just pay him off or run away? That's not the way Lorden did things. He was a master liar. But when he gave someone his word for real, he never backed down. Besides, as we later found out, Sambo wasn't evil in his nature. He was just a true soldier. He did what was asked of him. Lorden spent hours talking with him, explaining our rules of conduct. Sambo never broke any of them, not once. That's incredible! Oh! We've just been raided, yeah, yeah! We've been raided, ladies and gentlemen, by JKG Gaming TTV. Welcome in, raiders, and welcome into our playthrough of the amazing um, Medieval Dynasty. And uh, you've just joined us where I'm in the middle of doing... Um, my voices for the story. Thank you very much, my bro. How was your stream, dude? So yeah, let's uh, let's get back into the voices. That's incredible. Your lives, I mean. I don't think I would be able to handle any of that. Honestly, I hope you will never have to. 
I've been through a lot. And after all these years, the thing I wish you the most is to have a boring, steady life. Compared to your stories, a boring life sounds pleasant. Oh, then I have a special request for you. That will help achieve that boredom. Sure thing, what do you need? I need you to go to Borowo. Find Ida and get my scythe back from her. <laughs> Consider it done! So there we go, another quest to get done. And it's night time again, so... Are we going to be able to sleep? I find it weird, like... So night time appears on here. And you can only sleep every nine hours. But I think that's nine hours of actual gameplay. Okay. Yo, Aaron Drake, Jake Paul, welcome in, welcome in. Data Bank, Miranda, how we doing? You got a bed? I am, my head hurts. Your head hurts. Take mm. some um, painkillers. I already have. You already have. Mm. <coughs> that was a really loud that kiss. Was a very loud kiss. Welcome to the kissing channel. <laughs> <laughs> Night, babe. I'll see, I love you too. I'll see you in the morning. See you in a few hours. <laughs> oh, we've caught another rabbit. Let's collect our rabbit. Wabbit season. Let's light up our fire. Can we sleep? Oh, we can sleep. Uh, not to be that. Thank you for the opportunity, but I'm going to have to leave the team. My internet's due to go soon, so I won't be out. Mate, that's not a problem at all. Not a problem. I get that. Um, to be honest, I will probably be leaving the team as well um, due to the fact of it's always other people having to do other stuff for the team. I did the pun time whilst you were reading. Griff, I did see that. I did see that. Um, like I say, we've got about another 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes left of this episode. After episode two is finished... We'll sign it off, get onto the Just Chatting screen, give you some puns, have a quick two-minute break, and then after that, we will come back into episode three. But yeah, Bowser, um, we talked about that earlier, so I'm not going to talk about it. On your, that's no problem at all, dude. No problem at all. It's 11 a.m. for you. 11 a.m. It's just gone 10 past 10 in the evening here. Where are you from, Data? Where are you from, mate? If it's 11 a.m., I'm thinking across the pond, maybe Australia. Last week, the last week before summer break. Nice. You're from Sweden and it's 11 a.m. Do you mean 11 p.m.? Was you meant to? Was you meant to do PM? He was. He was meant to say PM. So now I know. <laughs> There's me. You get me all confused, man. Right. So we've regained our health. Uh, let's go and get our scythe. So we need to go and get our scythe. We need to go over to Borowo. So we've got our knife out just in case. So we're going to go and get our scythe now from um, from this lovely lady. You got so confused for a moment. I know, right? Right, we're going to get our scythe from this lady, take it back, and then it won't be long and it'll be the end of the episode. Um, where is she? Oh, don't tell me I've got to wake up another person. Oh, no, there she is. Hello. Do I know you? Hello, Ida. I'm here for Unigos Scythe. Take a hike, kid. I want it fair and square. One? <laughs> the little snake didn't tell you. About that, hmm? Figures. Is this a new... It's new for me. Uh, it's been out a little while. Called Medieval Dynasty. Um, you've basically got to build a settlement. Create a village. Um... Hunt stuff, make a farmyard, like, basic, yeah, 
there's a lot to do on this game. Um, so I'm glad that I get to bring this to you and uh, show you all it. And not only that, you get my voices, okay? You get to hear my voices that I like to do. I don't know what you mean. He only wanted me to get his scythe back. It's my scythe now. <laughs> okay, okay, relax. What can I do to get your scythe then? You can buy it from me, of course, or we can play for it. What's the game? The same that made Unigos lose. All of his money and the scythe. <laughs> A game of riddles. How is it played? Simple. I tell you three riddles. You must answer all of them correctly. One mistake, the game's over. You win, you get the scythe. <laughs> and if I lose? I'll go easy on you this time. If you lose, you don't owe me anything. You just forfeit the chance of getting the scythe for free. Okay, hit me with those riddles. First one. What disappears the second you say its name? <laughs> That's easy, Ida. That would be silence. Correct. Are you ready for the next one? Here it is. Feed me, I live. Give me a drink, I die. What am I? <laughs> I thought these riddles were going to be hard, Ida. That's fire. Oh, you're good. Better than big Mr. Castilian already. But can you get this final one? Now listen carefully. I can fly, but I have no wings. I can cry, but I have no eyes. Wherever I go, darkness follows me. And what am I? <laughs> there was me thinking this was going to be a challenge, Ida. That scythe is as good as mine. You're a cloud. Damn, you're sharp. Congratulations, you win an old man's crappy scythe. It doesn't get better than that. Thank you for the game. I had fun. Take care. There we go, look. Even more voices come out. Sounds like a survival game or something like that. This is it, mate. This is it. It is basically... You've te Technically, you've got to survive. Um... That's they're the two houses I've built up already for my for my little village that I'm starting. I thought I'd start it, start it fairly close to these two settlements that are over here, um, just in case I need to keep coming back. But at some point, who knows? I mean, the map's pretty big to be fair. Um, like I say, this is this is the map. There's quite a big map. Um, these are like the different animal stuff that we've found. So this is like where foxes and everything like that live. So we can hunt foxes, hunt rabbits. Um, we ran into a wolf earlier by mistake. I didn't mean to start a fight with a wolf. But we killed the wolf, skinned it, got the meat, got the fur. And went from there, really. You can see in the top right-hand corner, we've got the story. So the story that we're doing at the moment is Unigos' story. So we're going to go and give him the scythe we've just won. Um, you'll also see there's different chapters. So the chapter is Good Morning, My Neighbours. Which is just to complete some quests from the neighbours. And we've got to do some flirting at some point. So uh, we're going to get our flirt on. Where's Unigost? He ran straight past me. He didn't even say hello to me. You're back already. Hey, Unigost, I've got your scythe. Splendid. Were there any troubles on your way? <laughs> you tell me, were there? I might have left a teeny tiny detail out. <laughs> you don't say. How did you manage to get my scythe then? With my wits. Oh, you're brighter than I was then. <laughs> was that ever in doubt? Don't be cocky, kid. Anyway, I have news. Sambor's looking for you. For me? You sure? I've been told he asked about the one with the funny eyes and the stupid face. I see. Okay then. I won't prolong this humiliation and I will go and find him. Let's go and have a look see who we've got here. 
Grimilda. Let's go and talk with Grimilda. Can we flirt with you, Grimilda? You're 18. We can. We can flirt. What brought you here? Destiny, of course. Literally. That was a nickname of a big guy I owed money to. Really big. Not too keen on forgiving, either. His kid had some real musical talent, though. You seem interesting. Don't make fun of me. But my favourite animals were always chickens. No idea why. I just love the way they run around and move their heads. How about you, Grimilda? Uh, I would have to be a wolf. It's strong, fast and agile. Majestic but deadly. And it's still basically a doggy. So, it must love belly rubs. Just like me. So I can't ask her anything else because she needs some time to think about what I've just said. Even though she's just given me an answer. Grimilda, I don't know if you're the one for me now. <laughs> Never mind. Farewell, Grimilda. Farewell, Grimilda. A wife. Finding a wife is the first step to secure your dynasty's survival. Your future spouse will move into your house and aid you with various tasks. One day she may provide you with an heir. Bruh. Nothing comes easy. First, you have to win her heart. Bruh. Old Mayor. How can I help you? Have you heard about anything interesting recently? Jenica, I heard someone has a quest for you there. They say, dance for me, dance for me, dance for me. Oh, 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 oh. What's Dale Boar doing here? How old are you, young one? You are seven years old. Hello, sir. I need to run. Be good. Be good, young boy. <laughs> hey, old friend. Hello there. Did you forget I'm happily married to that charming senior citizen over there? Of course you are. Only the best products here. Oh, wow. She's got food. I never knew she had food. How much does this all cost? I will have some beetroot, please. I'll have one beetroot, alright? Just give me one beetroot. Goodbye. Farewell, fair maiden. Um, why have I got my fists up for? I don't need my fists up. Hello. Hello. You're a stranger. I can't talk with you. That's very responsible of you. It's nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you too. Have you heard of anything interesting recently? Denica. That's where someone needs your help. Okay, we'll go to Denica then. Goodbye. Apparently some, someone in Denica needs my help. I don't even know where Denica is. Denica's all the way over there. What the hell, man? That's miles away. That's going to be done in episode three. Oh. Right, so yeah, ladies and gentlemen, that is episode two wrapped up for you all of Medieval Dynasty. A lot of this episode has been... Um, what's it called? Vocal work by the one and only me. But, I mean, look out. We've got some skills here. Let's use these skills first. Survival sense. Seeing sticks, stones, mushrooms, feathers. That, yes, that's what we need. Right, that's good. And what else we got here? A water dancer. Headstrong. Survivalist. 10% slower loss of food and water. Yes, please. Awesome. Right, so we've just unlocked a couple of new skills. Green.